So the Thailand election results just came in, and I gotta be honest, the results are pretty shocking. And in this video, I thought I'd break it all down for you and answer the big question, which is what happens next? But first, we gotta understand the political landscape here heading into the election. The political system here is so much different than America and many other Western countries. There's so many parties here vying for votes, and I wanted to give you a quick breakdown of the top parties entering the election. The current Prime Minister heading into the election is Prayut chan -ocha, and he assumed uh, power in a military coup about eight years ago, and he entered this election under a new party formed in March of 2021 called the United Thai Nation Party. This is a Conservative Party who's been in power for the past eight years. Well, well they haven't, but Prayut has, and this is important because Thailand has a two-term or eight-year limit for its Prime Minister, but chan -cha vowed to use this new party to remain in power for two more years to complete unfinished work. Key campaign promises, including increasing state welfare benefits to a thousand baht per month, continuing competitive enhancement programs like the Eastern Economic Corridor Project and subsidizing crop prices. Next up is the former party of Prayut chan -cha, and this is called the Palang Pracharat Party. And this was the core party that ruled after the last election in 2019. It has a new leader who's named Prawit Wangsuan, Prawit Wang Suan, Thai people, correct my pronunciation. And he has promised to govern in a more unifying manner in an attempt to satisfy both the conservative and the liberal voters. His campaign promises including increasing state welfare to 700 baht a month, providing child subsidies until uh, the age of six, lowering retail diesel prices, and reallocating empty lands for the residential and farming uh, sectors to benefit two million low-income earners. Then there's the Boom Jai Thai Party, which started as a regional party up in the province of Buriram. And this party grabbed national headlines because this is the one that was the driving force behind Thailand's newly relaxed cannabis laws. The architect of Thai's legalization of marijuana, Anutin Charnvirakul, is the party leader now, and he's promised to pass formal legislation to properly regulate marijuana use. It is still the Wild West here. He also promised a three-year moratorium on consumer debt and free solar power to reduce electricity prices by 450 baht a month. Next up is the Democrat Party. This is one of Thailand's oldest and historically biggest parties, and, and they suffered a major blow back in the 2019 election, and they've spent the past four years as a small part of the governing coalition. Now, in an attempt to stage a comeback, its leader, Jurind Laksana Wisit, promised 30,000 baht for every farming household, free school milk, and free undergraduate educational programs. And moving from the conservative to the liberal side of things, there's the Pu Thai Party. This is the party affiliated with the Sinawat family. And any party associated with the mercurial Taksin Sinawat has been the top seat winner in every election since 2001. They entered this election hoping that the new leader and daughter of Taksin, Pei Tong Tarn Sinawat, would deliver a massive landslide victory. They predicted it. She campaigned on a platform that promised to raise the minimum wage to 600 baht per day. She promised to end military conscription and to find new trade measures to lower oil prices and utility bills. Now, believe it or not, there are several more political parties here in Thailand, but the last one that I wanted to highlight is the one that shocked the election, the Move Forward Party. This party represented by far the most progressive of all entrants. 
แต่พอคุณเป็นนักการเมืองเนี่ยประชาชนเขาคาดหวังกับคุณทั้งหมดคุณจะบอกว่าเฮ้ยคุณเป็นสสที่สนใจด้านประชาธิปไตยแล้วคุณจะไม่สนใจด้านแรงงานไม่ได้คุณเป็นสสที่สนใจด้านประชาธิปไตยคุณไม่สนใจเรื่องสิ่งแวดล้อมไม่ได้คุณต้องสนใจเพราะประชาชนเขาจะถือว่าเขาเป็นคนจ่ายเงินเดือนให้คุณเขาสามารถมีความคาดหวังกับคุณได้ Their campaign focused on annual minimum wage increases starting at 450 b a h a day and major reforms across the board to major institutions to get an idea as to how progressive they are listen to their leader a 42 year old who was educated at Harvard University Pita l i m j e r o n r a t I understand that this election is about uh, people looking for a new face. A new future. It's about finding new consensus for the new normal in Thailand after COVID, after geopolitics of Russia and Ukraine, after what's happening in Myanmar. You know, so um, people are really thinking about the inequality of the country, whether it's a choice between profit and progress. So definitely, we are challenging the status quo, you know, and fighting the inertia within the system. I think what we need to do with the Thai economy is to uh, spread it out, you know, to decentralize it instead of having everything concentrated within Bangkok. So when COVID crisis hit uh, two years back and we had to lock down Bangkok, 50% of our economy is gone. We are very much focused on tourism, which is 20% of our GDP, but that 20% of uh, tourism. Uh, revenue goes to just Bangkok, Pattaya, and Chiang Mai, and it's not just spread it out towards the entire country. So our economy looks like this: it's a big head and a very small legs and arms and everything else. So what we needed to do is three things in terms of policies: is to demilitarize, demonopolize, and decentralize, and that's. Very much my 100-day agenda. I've never ever heard a Thai politician speak this way, and and it just goes to show how different the landscape is today than ever before. And so, as the nation went to the voting booth just last weekend, there was a huge sentiment of unpredictability. Now, it's important to note that there was record voter turnout to this election. With a staggering 75.2 percent of eligible voters showing up to cast their vote, showing just how important the election and this election was to the ties, and shockingly, the Move Forward Party gained the most seats with 152, along with 38.5 percent of the popular vote. Second was the Put Thai Party with 141 seats and 29.3 percent. Next was the Bum Jai Thai Party with 70 seats, the Palang Pracharat Party with 40, the UTN Party with 36, and the Democrats with 25. And the rest of the parties just rounded out the seat winners. And here is k u n k i t a Canal boats. Here is k u n k i t a with. His reaction to the results. It is important to note the geography of the election results, though. It's quite interesting. It's split between young and old, rural and urban. The Move Forward Party dominated the urban vote, sweeping 32 of the 33 seats available in Bangkok, which has long been a democratic stronghold. Up north, it won 19 districts, including the hometown of the p u t a i founder, Taksin s i n a w a t a And in the south, it broke the long-standing conservative grip on Phuket to win all three seats there. But it's far from over. So the big question is, what comes next? Well, before a prime minister can be named, the final votes and election results need to be certified, and this alone can take up to 60 days. Meanwhile. Intense negotiations will be going on as the Move Forward Party tries to form a coalition to get enough votes to elect their prime minister. And the difference between p u a t a i and Move Forward, these differences are the key here because without p u a t a i in the coalition, there's literally no chance due to the structure and process of getting enough votes. 
but it sounds like these differences have already been resolved. I have congratulated uh, Kun Pei Tong Tan from Pei Thai for her hard-fought campaign and have invited her to join the coalition. And that uh, includes uh, five more parties in the previous opposition, including Pak Prasha Shad, Thai Sang Thai, Seri Rum Thai, and, and Pak Ben Tang. So there will be a total of six parties that will amount to approximately 309 out of 500 in the lower house. And I think we can secure, uh, safe to assume that we have secured the majority in forming the government going forward. So is this coalition alone enough to guarantee that PETA is named prime minister? Not so fast. The vote to formally name the Prime Minister consists of two groups. The lower house, which is the 500 seats that have just been decided by the election itself, and then a further 250 seats in the upper house or the Senate. This Senate is not made up of elected officials, but rather previously appointed representatives. And this is where the challenge lies for move forward. The prime ministerial candidate must secure over half of the votes from the lower house and Senate, meaning it will take 376 votes to put PETA in charge. They are not only looking for coalition members to push them over the edge here, but they're also hoping to sway the votes of at least some of the Senate seats. You need quite a large majority in parliament to be able to outvote the senators if they all vote en masse for one particular candidate, which is what they did last time. So we'll have to see here, if we're looking at 309 uh, parties, uh, sorry, MPs getting together with the, oppos the current opposition parties trying to form a government, they would struggle to get their prime ministerial candidate nominated if all the current government MPs voted along with the senators. The numbers would not add up. Will the Move Forward Party have to back down on the enormously radical promises of breaking up monopolies and lessening the power of the military to get to the finish line? Only time will tell, but I can tell you how I feel about all of this. I'm just a visitor in this country. I recognize that and I have no political affiliations. It's clear to me that the young people and the urban people want change, while the older voters, the older ties and the rural people who live in the farms and whatnot, they, they kind of want more of the status quo. My hope is just that politics doesn't divide the amazing people that make up Thailand. I find it so sad when politics turns good people against each other happens all the time in America and I find it quite sad how sometimes politicians seem to revel in dividing their people. I hope that doesn't happen to Thailand. I see an amazingly bright future for this country and I wish nothing but the best for all Thai people out there, young and old. I think that you guys deserve to dream bigger and I can't wait to see you make those dreams come true.